People often ask, what does it take to save a life? It's important to understand the financial part of our work and how we're impacting the culture and you know how we're spending our funds and things like that. But you can't put a price tag on what it takes to save a life. When these women make this choice, they're doing so not because they want to hurt their baby. They're doing so because they are so scared. There's a community of people that are involved in saving one woman's life and transforming culture. For us, we're blessed to work with member organizations. All of these different people make up the pro-life community and it takes all of us working together in unity to really change the culture and to save a life. Everybody comes together to help these people who have chosen life. I would say when you work for the pro-life union, it's hard not to be completely involved. Because you are hearing stories every single day, whether you're just on the other side of a phone call, if that's, you're just hearing the one side of a story and how difficult this pregnancy may be for this woman. And then it, you're also just praying for those women, so it becomes just a part of your life. Most women, what happens is they find out that they're pregnant, they're not sure what to do, they go to a Planned Parenthood because everyone tells them that's where they should go. When they walk in that door, hopefully, there is someone standing outside of that abortion facility. The thing with praying outside of an abortion center, and more than anything, being a loving witness. Personally, for me, I never feel closer to God than I do when I'm standing out there. You really feel the presence and the strength of God with you at that moment. They don't know where else to go and all the people that are around them, that are supporting them, are pushing them in the way of abortion. They're telling them that there is no other way. Hopefully when we're there, women take those cards and they take that time. So they go into the abortion facility 24 hours before their abortion and if we can reach them before that, then they have time to think about the options that we've presented to them. And then the prayers of all the people throughout the community that are praying for a change of heart and a change of culture are impacting those women. Once they find that, then it's like a chain of events. So what does she need? Does she need housing? Does she need clothing? Does she just need a friend? Does she need support? And then it's up to us as a pro-life community to help her find that support and connect her with the right people. Every single day we're battling the culture and they're providing education and opportunities for people to get involved. A woman called our pregnancy hotline a few months ago. She said that she was looking for an abortion. She thought that that was her best option. So we talked for a little bit longer and I said, it was interesting because she was at the beginning of her third trimester and we had worked really hard this year on the 20 week abortion plan. There's been a lot of research done through the medical community um, by really well-read, well-researched uh, neurologists and neonatal physicians who have shown through research that babies can feel pain after 20 weeks and possibly even earlier. And because of that, I was very familiar with what the baby really looked like and I could picture it in my head. And I just asked her, I said, can I ask you a question? Can you feel the baby move? And she said, she kind of stopped for a minute, and she said, I can, but I feel like I'm just trying not to think about it. So I talked to her a little bit longer and I explained to her that there were options and that she deserved better. And so I told her a little bit about God and Star Ministries, our, our maternity home in the Germantown section of Philadelphia. We started talking about it and I said, it's a maternity home for women and their children. We're unique in the city of Philadelphia because we do take women and children. And she was open to that and a few days later she moved in we went and helped her move out of her little one room apartment when they come they are oftentimes they're very nervous at times they're even thrown into a community meal which can be a very good thing because you're having to meet the residents the other residents in the home she was very much 
at peace, but I think she was still really unsure about the pregnancy, and I think she was thinking, I'm just buying myself some time. Maybe I'm gonna not do this. Maybe I will take that drive to D.C. and get this abortion. And I knew that, and the staff knew that. Something that we just recently implemented is having a new welcome dinner for the residents. So it kind of gives them an opportunity to meet everyone. It's a little bit more laid back, and then they receive a gift for themselves and their baby. When we had the welcome dinner, we gave her a basket, and in that basket there's you know diapers, onesies, some um, soap for the baby's laundry, and things like that. And then we had a little outfit, a dinosaur outfit for her three-year-old son. And all of a sudden she looked in the basket, and it was like everything turned in that moment. And she smiled, really for the first time, and said, I wonder, like she started talking about names and what she would name the baby. And you could just see this transformation in her in that moment because she was part of this community, because she knew that she was loved and that there really was going to be help, not just a roof over her head, but support and security and love from everybody involved. So she had different people in her life, not just one person, not just the staff, but again, an entire community. And then she had the baby on September 27th, a little boy. And that's really the best that we can do, is encounter each one of the women that we meet with love and with kindness and help her in that moment so that, she, that her life can be transformed. Because it really does take that, all of us working together. It's to know that you're doing something and you're serving God. You're doing it because you genuinely care and love for these people. And our job is to not make them a price tag, to know that there's, there's no cost we won't go to to help you save your baby's life. I guess that would seem extraordinary, but isn't that exactly what a family does? Isn't that what a community really does, is come together put all of your effort into it so that you can impact lives and save them.